Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite theorems, fields, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But it's a very biased collection. That That is really important to say. It's a very, very biased collection, obviously. No. Who isn't biased? I'm clearly very biased. Um, and mathematics as a field is very biased. So uh, it's kind of, kind of really, will be really fun. So in 100 years, I'm, I'm long dead. But in 100 years, people will look back at the air, what we are right now in the time of mathematics we are in right now, and they will think, hmm, there is field X, Y, Z, which in a hundred years is really prominent, really important, and nobody has looked at it at this point. And you really wonder why. And there is not a, ne usually never a good answer to it. So why haven't people studied X, Y, Z? Why were people focused too much on? It's always kind of the same thing. So a lot of progress, not just in mathematics, but in science in general, is to somewhat have the right idea. Um, maybe to do something easy that nobody has thought about before. It doesn't need to be a difficult thing. Sometimes it's just something easy and people before you just didn't do it for no obvious reason whatsoever. And linear programming is one of those things. Linear programming, the surprise, surprise topic of this video, is one of these things that started in the 1940s, roughly, where you would think that people, uh, people have thought about this before. Right, so it's like sounds like something. I will try to motivate that. That sounds like something uh, people have done that. Right, people have done that for a long time, but somehow the flavor or the bias or the trendy things in mathematics were different, uh, and people were studying different things. It's very similar today. Today we have certain fields are trendy, other fields are not so trendy, and in a hundred years everything will look very different, and there will be certain facts of life, facts of mathematics, where people really will think, um, why has nobody thought about that? And yeah, linear programming is one of those. And the reason why I find this so surprising, or I say it again, it's actually not surprising at all, it happens all the time, but in a specific example, it's always surprising, right? So in the general scheme of things, it's not surprising, it happens all the time. People are just overly focused on aspect X, and they completely miss aspect Y. And even though aspect Y is super powerful and super simple, it just happens all the time. But if you zoom in into a specific example and you're trying to kind of pick out why people haven't studied it, it's, it's not obvious at all. It's kind of very surprising. So let's zoom into a specific example. Mm, so the story starts by system of linear equations. So one of the first things you ever learn in mathematics is to solve linear equations. And this is ancient. People have done that for a long time. Yeah? So Gaussian elimination is kind of one of the keywords, which doesn't really go back to Gauss. I mean, Gauss did it. Gauss did a lot of things. But it was known ages before. So solving linear equations is something people have done from the very start. So the, the, the moment people wrote down mathematics, people probably were already writing down system of linear equations. And yeah, so they're remarkably easy. I should say that really, they're remarkably easy. Um, nowadays it looks to me at least like, of course they're easy. But if you just think about it, they're remarkably easy. They're super efficient to solve. You kind of can tell exactly what's supposed to happen depending on whether that's underdetermined, overdetermined. It's really, really easy. Yeah? And also I, everyone has grown up with it nowadays. It's still remarkably how easy those things are. Like really simple. Uh, yeah, so here's an example, and it usually corresponds to intersection of planes, and you want to find the point in the intersection, the line in the intersection, something like this. And these things are so easy that if you really pick kind of science apart, then you will, it, it's really predominant, then you will see a lot of things, not just in mathematics, but also in other fields, who model something along linear equations. Not necessarily because whatever you want to model is really a linear a system of linear equations, but really because it's so easy. It's so easy and it's brilliant and it's beautiful and everyone loves it. Linear equations are just perfect. Everyone likes linear equations. The, the real problem is that almost nothing is actually really linear. It's kind of... <laughs> you're kind of not talking really about anything real world, right? So you're talking about some very, 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 very specific case. Um, and yeah, you get a nice solution in that case. And as humans, 
it's always the same, right? So if something works, people do it, right? So that's that's point. Not necessarily because it's what you need to do or what you want to do, but be but because it works. And system of linear equations are roughly that, that's what it is. They work very well. Everyone knows that they work very well. So a lot of things are just made linear. Yeah. So the the field I'm usually working in representation theory is just the one observation that you should make things linear, although you will lose information, you can make them linear and they're easier to study. Just one example out of a Trozuga Zillion. Just come up with your favorite. It's, it's not so difficult. And you might wonder, why is that? Eh, if we all learned in a hard way or whatever, but we all know that life is not linear. I mean, essentially, nothing is linear. So why is this over-focus on linear equations? Well, I already said, that they are really easy to solve, but there's also the other side of the coin, which says that everything beyond the linear equation is like, no, you don't do it. It's like a no, you don't do it. It's really difficult. So system of nonlinear equations are ah, very, very difficult. So it's so bad that instead of having a one way to solve them, like for a system of linear equations, it's really more like you have one type of them, and there's a whole field of mathematics just associated to studying that type of equation. That's, that's how kind of difficult it is. So polynomial equations are usually associated with algebraic geometry. So one polynomial equation will look much, much more difficult um, <laughs> than one polynomial equation in many variables here. So x, y, z, and w will look much more complicated than the system of linear equations. So nonlinear equations are like remarkably difficult. Say it again. I was just talking with students the other day, and they were taking a, a differential equation a class, and they were surprised that instead of having like a linear algebra, like one tool to solve whatever, it's really more like a collection of tools tailor made for a specific type of equation. And yeah, that's what it is. That what happens if you don't study linear equations? It's it's terrifically difficult. It's really really nasty. <clears throat> Kind of ah, so the real world is not easy. That's essentially what it says. So it's 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 really bad. Sometimes it's so bad that you can't even write down numerical solutions because the system is, is chaotic or whatever. It's, it's really difficult. So and that's another reason why uh, linear equations are so popular because they are easy and as soon as you go an epsilon more, uh, kind of everything falls apart. So that's what at least I thought for a long long time. I know I'm a little bit late, I'm like 100 years late, but I'm slow. So, uh, and people also thought for a long, long time. So algebraic geometry was the first, kind of the first step if, uh, above uh, non uh, linear equations and algebraic geometry is really difficult. So solving algebraic geometry algorithms like the Grobner basis algorithm, they're just, ah, they're just really bad in the runtime. But there's one case that goes epsilon, it's, it's really an epsilon beyond a linear system of linear equations, which still has a nice solution. And that's essentially the point of linear programming. So what people realized, um, surprisingly late, surprisingly late, is that uh, what I call a kind of a, a standard problem, which is something like, something like this, find a vector that does something, standard linear programming problem is about not linear equations, but linear inequalities. So you replace the equal sign by a whatever a greater or a greater equal or lower equal, you know, some inequality type thing. And the picture changes a little bit. So instead of having something like a line, you have like a region, usually a polygon type region. And what is a bit surprising if you know like the history of mathematics and what I just told you that essentially all nonlinear equations are difficult to solve is that this case, which is epsilon beyond linear equations, is still easy in a certain way. It's not quite easy, I will comment on that in a second, but it's still somewhat easy. And that um, the, the field studying those type of equations, if you want, is called uh, linear programming, which strictly speaking is like one of those plus an optimization problem, but don't worry about that um, too much. Let's just say it's like solving those linear inequalities, like right? there's an epsilon plus a linear thing. And yeah, that can be done really efficiently. 
Uh, the, the statement is a bit nasty, so there's a famous algorithm, which is called the simplex algorithm. I'm not going to explain it, but essentially it finds a solution uh, running around the boundary of a simplex. That's where the name comes from. But anyway, that one solves essentially all the linear programming uh, problems in the polynomial time. That's almost true. This is almost true, right? This is a very nice statement. Polynomial time is like the best what you can hope for in this case. And it's almost a perfect type of statement because actually the worst case scenario of this problem is still exponentially hard. Just the average case is polynomial. And this is one of the crucial differences which took me a very, very long time to understand that really what you sh if, you're in, um, if you're interested in the practical applications of an algorithm, what you should look for is the average case complexity. How long does the algorithm on, on average take until it's finished? What people most often study, because it's much easier to study, is the worst case efficiency. What is kind of the worst case? Um, and it is really much easier. Let me just give you an uh, example why this is much easier, or a hint why this is much easier. A worst case is like you find a bound, right? So um, it's at, at least as difficult as this one and whatever, this one is blah. Average case is much more difficult because usually you have an, an, an infinite space of pos possible inputs. So you need to think carefully about your probability distribution actually and, and such very kind of technical things that you don't want to think about. So this statement is only halfway true. I should say something like average case in almost all probability distributions or something like that. But what you should really read is in practice, this algorithm is ridiculously good. Although the um, the worst case is, is pretty bad. And for me, this is one uh, of the crucial algorithms. So uh, I'm going through this list now, the simplex method from linear programming, the second one on this list of uh, algorithms of the century. And I like it so much because, well, it's surprisingly efficient. Huh? So keep in mind that going a little bit beyond linear equations is not necessarily supposed to be easy, but this one is. But it's also a cool example, which kind of was an eye opener for me, that sometimes studying the worst case is not the worst case complexity of a problem. It's not really what you need to do. Sometimes you really want to start study the average case complexity, because this one is a really fantastic algorithm. It made it on this list of algorithms of the century. It's like everywhere in modern computer mathematics. But the computational complexity in the worst case is pretty shit. It's exponential. It's pretty, pretty bad. But still, it's a good algorithm. So somehow, it took me again, as I said, a long time to understand this. Somehow the easy worst case analysis, which you almost always see, because it's easy, is usually not what you want to do, or often not what you want to do. And there are plenty of other problems which have a really terrible um, kind of worst case runtime, but actually not so bad in practice. And then there are the algorithms where even the average time is bad and usually uh, you don't want them. Um, sadly, sometimes there is no alternative. The aforementioned Gröbner algorithm, Gröbner basis, so solving the polynomial type of equations, is literally the only thing you can do. Sure, there are, there are different ways of doing it. You could polish it a little bit, but it has a really not great average time uh, complexity in contrast to this one which has a really, really nice average time, runtime complexity. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.